think it's that distracting. So. All right, here we go. Uh, so today we want to talk about higher derivatives. And higher derivatives, uh, we're going to talk about first, second, third, fourth. Here's the notation that you use. You guys are all familiar with f, okay? After you do f, then f prime, f double prime, f triple prime. But generally speaking, after you get uh, past a third derivative, uh, then you uh, mark it with a, you know, like almost like a power, but you put parentheses around it. So four and five. Anna, you get your hair stapled? Let's uh, staple Larry's hand to his face and see how he likes it. Okay. All right. Well, trust me, I got a, I got a staple gun at uh, home. We could. I should probably turn this off if I'm going to say that. Anyway, okay. So, this is uh, this first part is challenging. Okay. This first question question is challenging. I know you guys don't have the colors. And so you're going to have to just kind of focus on mine and then work your way around it. But the question is, um, we got to determine which one is the uh, original function. You think it's the yellow one. You think blue? Because <laughs> Well, shh, let me show you uh, really quick a nice way to identify shh, functions and their derivatives. I like to look at the value zero. For example, everybody look at this uh, blue one right here. Do you see that this uh, function crosses a zero at the value of one? Everybody see that? So if the blue one is a derivative of another function, then there should be some function that has a slope of 0 at 1. Does the red function have a slope of 0 at 1? The green? The purple? The yellow? So the blue one cannot be the graph of the derivative of any function. So therefore I know the blue is the original. Watch. Look at the red function. The red function crosses over 0 right here. That means that some other graph up here must have a slope of 0 at a value of, I suppose, I don't know what that is, like 2 fourths or something, or 2 fifths. The blue one, in fact, if you look, the blue one does have a slope of 0 where the red one crosses. That's the most important part you see today. I looked for where it crossed 0. I didn't find anything. I looked where this one crossed 0, and I found the blue one has a slope of 0 at that spot. Do you see that? Once we do that initial assessment, the rest is pretty straightforward, okay? So, F is going to be the blue. F prime. So, uh, we could, we, so I'll, I'll write it there. So, that's F. Um, F prime will be the red. So, now let's work from there. The slope of the red function, is it ever zero? Is it ever positive? Is it ever negative? No. So the red one is always positive, which means it's always above the x-axis. It's always above the x-axis. So therefore it has to be one of two. Which ones? The green or the purple? Derivative of the red one. Yep. So, let's consider this, everybody. Okay, let's look at the yellow one. Would everybody agree that the yellow one also always has a positive slope? Always has a positive slope, doesn't it? Um, never has a negative slope, does it? But here's the question. Question. Okay, so the yellow one gets paired up with either the uh, purple or the green just as the red gets paired up with the purple or the green. So let's decide, okay? Look at this function right here, okay? Look at the red right here. What do you think is a steeper rate of change? The red or the yellow? 
the red, okay? Which one has a greater value uh, as you move closer to zero, the green or the purple? If check, check the value of one, check the value of one, okay? If, if you go to one, the green is here. If you go to one, the purple is here. The purple gets bigger, doesn't it? So we know that F double prime is going to be purple. Let's now take the derivative of the purple graph. The purple graph is always negative, never positive. And what's the only function up here that's always negative? The yellow one. So we know that f quadruple prime is going to be which one? The green. And is that it? Is that all of them? Did, okay, so I, I, I put too many up there. I miscounted. Sorry. So we've got all four. We did it. Good job. Okay. All right. We move along. Let's try a nice basic example now. Instead of graphs, let's use algebra. It says find the first and second derivatives of the following functions. What is the first derivative of this first function? You good with that? Now let's do f double prime. That's it. We'll get to some harder problems. Yep, on the back side we'll get to y. We'll get to implicit differentiation on the back side. Okay, uh, how about letter B? Letter B. Chain rule, very good. Uh, can anybody identify the derivative without actually setting up the four boxes? Okay, all right, so let me show you the trick. It says the derivative of the inside, which is 2, times the derivative of the outside, 5 something to the fourth, with the inside left alone. Well, but I, I, I just do that. I do 2, and then I bring the 5, I do 10 right away. So, But if you want to set up the boxes, should we set up the boxes? Okay. So when we set up the boxes, we've got u to the 5th, we've got 2x minus 3, we've got 5u to the 4th, and we've got 2. Remember to substitute back in. As we set up the boxes, we multiply, and you see we get the 10, and we get the u, which is 2x minus 3, to the 4th power now. If I want to do the second derivative, what do I have to use? I have to use the chain rule a second time. And so we can set it up. 10u to the fourth. Set up the boxes. I have 2x minus 3 again on the inside. Um, the derivative of 10u to the fourth is 40u to the third. Derivative of 2x minus 3 is 2. You multiply them and get... 80, 2x minus 3 to the third. One, one difficult thing is that uh, as you move forward, especially the algebraic pieces, is that you know back in um, algebra one and algebra two, uh, there was you know a lot more time spent on you know certain certain operations. Okay, and uh, now as you move forward, we definitely go over a lot of the algebra topics, but uh, you know, we're, we're kind of the chain rule now. I mean, we, we're not really going to spend any more time on it. I mean, it's going to be used quite often, but you know, we won't really go back and do it. So um, chain rule is something uh, hopefully is in your brain. You guys feel good about chain rule? All right. So we got our second derivative. Let's uh, now go to this side. So 
I've got the 2x minus 3, but this time it's to the what power? 2x minus 3 to the 1. So now I take the derivative, and I set up my boxes. That's what you guys would like to do, so that's what we're going to do. What's the derivative of u to the 1 half? 1 over 2 roots of u. One half u to the negative one half, which is one over two roots of u. And then the derivative of this is times two. So when you multiply those together, the one half and the two cancel. And you just get f prime of x is equal to one over the square root of two x minus three. Correct? <laughs> Double derivative, I have to write this as two x minus three to the negative one half. Now, could you also do the quotient rule? You sure could. Sure could. <laughs> so I'm going to do the uh, chain rule again. And I have u to the negative one half. And I have 2x minus 3. What is the derivative of u to the negative one half? Very good. 1, negative 1 over 2u to the 3 halves. What is the derivative of 2x minus 3? 2. When you multiply those, what cancels? The 2s, and so you're left with just a negative 1 over. I'm going to write it as 2x minus 3 to the 3 halves. I prefer to use rational exponents a lot of times in these situations. Any questions on that problem? Oh, you don't want to do E. Well, both the next ones are a little bit challenging. Um, but before we move on, any questions on the basic ones? So if you saw those on the test, you feel like you could ace them. Okay. We could just not get right, we're just skip it all. All right. <laughs> all right, now we got f of theta equals theta cosecant of theta. If you're going to find the derivative of this, what do you have to use? Product rule. No, if you had, if you had theta cosecant of, say, 2 theta, then you have to do it. But we do know what the derivative of cosecant is. You have that memorized. Right. Negative cosecant cotangent. So let's set this up. We have the product rule. So we'll go f prime of theta is equal to what's the derivative of theta? 1 times cosecant of theta plus theta times what's the derivative of negative cosecant theta cotangent of theta. A lot of thetas in there. I, I think it's cool after you do a after you do a problem. Well I've got a negative in there, so it's plus and then it's theta times a negative. So you're right, um, Hannah, we'll we'll do that. We'll go equals cosecant of theta uh, minus theta cosecant of theta cotangent of theta. We'll leave it like that. How's that? If you want to factor out a cosecant and write it as 1 minus cotangent, that's fine, but you don't have to. I'm going to I'm going to leave it like this. Okay, so now I need to do f double prime. Yeah. If I do f double prime, what's the derivative of cosecant? And cosecant of theta, cotangent of theta. And then, oh boy, uh, I'm going to have to write minus, and then I'm going to have to just put parentheses here, because I'm going to have to distribute that through. This involves the product rule twice. 
So, and I'm going to choose that one to be my first function and that one to be my second function. All right. So, uh, Kaylee sees that I want to find the derivative of theta cosecant of theta. Now, it's not always going to work out like this, but we do know the derivative of theta cosecant of theta, don't we? We just did it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, if you f prime of theta, there you go. Okay, uh, times what? So I did this times cotangent plus the derivative of cotangent, which is. Negative cosecant squared, so minus cosecant squared times theta cosecant of theta. So, well, just for good measure, I'm going to write the whole thing out so we can see exactly what it is. So, f double prime is going to be negative cosecant of theta cotangent of theta minus uh, f prime, which is cosecant of theta, and then plus theta, cosecant of theta, cotangent of theta. I, so I'm distributing my subtraction sign through. And then it's going to be a plus theta times cosecant to the Third. You kind of wonder if something like cancels there somewhere, but yeah, doesn't really look like it. Yeah. No, 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 this is fine. So the F prime is, you know, we inserted this piece right here. Whoop. Oh, whoop, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When we inserted F prime of theta, we inserted uh, this guy right here, right? And we have to multi multiply that by cotangent, so it should be a cotangent square. Oh, and a cotangent here, shouldn't it? <laughs> so then you do have like terms, so it'll be minus two of those. Yeah. All right. There we go. That looks nice. All right, I'm confident with that. <laughs> Let's graph it. No. <laughs> All right. Can I erase it now? Okay. All right. All right. So this is kind of cool. Uh, what if you end up in a situation where you are taking a derivative and it involves implicit differentiation? The first derivative isn't that bad at all. The second derivative gets just a little bit challenging, and we'll see how that works out. But I think you guys will do just great. 
What is the derivative of 9x squared plus y squared equals 4? Hold on for the phone. All right, so uh, let's see what you get. 18x plus 2y, y prime equals 0. Yep, so 2y, y prime equals negative 18x. And then you got y prime was equal to negative 9x over y. Yes? Can I get rid of that thing on the top? Okay, so now we want to do uh, the second derivative, right? Yeah. So, what? Uh, yeah, you can set up as the product rule, but we're going to use the quotient rule. Okay, so do you see that you need to use the quotient rule here? What's the derivative of y prime? <laughs> y double prime. Now I'm going to use the quotient rule. What's the derivative of, with respect to x, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of negative 9 x times the bottom. No, 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 everybody pause, everybody pause. <laughs> okay, all right. So. I'm using the quotient rule. The quotient rule says take the derivative of the top with the bottom left alone, right? So I just leave the y. Okay, minus <laughs> my. <laughs> there we go. I uh, name nine y, and then I I minus the the top left alone. What's the top left alone? So I have plus nine x. Times the derivative of the bottom, which is y prime. You just take <laughs> just taking the derivative of y, not not y prime. Now over what y squared. So, we should not write a derivative. We should not write a derivative with another derivative in the problem. Very good. So, Larry, see, Larry sees something right here. He sees that this uh, y prime, I can substitute back in negative 9x over y, which is what we did before. Often in a second derivative, you can pop the first derivative right back in there. So, negative 9 x over y. What? Yeah. And, and we're going to get some stuff to cancel here, guys. We're going to get some stuff to cancel here. So it's going to be minus 81x squared <laughs> over y. Is that correct? And that's all over. Okay. Now, okay, we got a complex fraction, don't we? So we need to multiply top and bottom of this by, so I have y squared over y. So I have y double prime is equal to, on the top I have negative 9y squared minus 81x squared over y. And I can multiply by the over y squared over 1. Multiply by the reciprocal and we get negative nine x squared. Whoa. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, 
I, I'm sorry, this was from the problem right here. So, so when I multiply, oh, I'll start it. I'll start a new. I'll start a new spot so you can see it better. Okay. So I've got negative nine y squared uh, minus eighty one x squared over y all over y squared over one. Right. So when we multiply by the reciprocal, one over y squared, we get negative 9y squared minus 81x squared all over y to the third. No, there, there's such a beautiful trick here at the end. It's just one more step, and I just I want to show you guys something, okay? No, it's so. Just watch. It's so cool. Everybody see that? What is y squared plus 9x squared equal to? Do you see? I factored out the negative 9. I came up with my 9x squared plus my y squared, which is just 4. Look at your original problem. Original problem says... 9x squared plus y squared is 4. So, 9x squared plus y squared is 4. Negative 9 times 4 is? So, y double prime is negative 36 over y to the third. Bada bing, bada bam, bada boom, ski, box it. <laughs> All right, I think you got enough for one day. We the we do need to do the last problem, but uh, we do it tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay, bye YouTube Nation. We'll do the assignment tomorrow when we finish the video.